way to store energy, uh, besides in the spring, is in the gravitational field. I mean, you know, this works. I could do work by raising this up. And we've talked about this before. As I put work into the A, I give it gravitational potential energy. If I release it, I get that energy back in the, same, in the form of what's called kinetic energy, energy of motion. The farther up I raise it, well, the farther up I raise it, I mean, if I was, like, no way out there. I mean, the farther up I raise it, the more potential energy it's got. And when it falls, oh. Dr. Peter Prober, professor of proctology, former NFL linebacker. We better evacuate before it gets to the bottom of this. Come on. Maybe we should close the door. Man, if that guy finds us, I'm telling you, man, I've crossed him before. It's not good. Well, anyway, maybe we can get down there. Since I can't slow things down, maybe we can get down there before it lands. Let's find out what's happening with that egg. All right. I'm thinking purple for this one. The egg's up here. And it's a height of four times ten is forty feet. It's at a height of about uh, forty feet, uh, thirty meters, thirty twelve meters. It's at a height of about twelve meters. And as it falls to the gravitational field, it's going to convert that potential energy of gravitational field in the gravitational field to kinetic energy. So gravitational potential energy will be converted into kinetic energy. And it'll dissipate some because it's got to move air out of the way. So it'll heat up the air some as well. So this has got a certain mass. And the potential energy, let's see, energy stored in a gravitational field is also given by EP because it's potential energy. You can use it. The potential energy is due to the mass times the gravity times the height. Or, if it's an English unit, it's just the weight of the object, you know, the force times the height. This is a form of energy, so it's force times distance, weight times height, or mass times gravity times height. Now, as it gets down there, it's going to be converting that into kinetic energy, energy of motion. So kinetic energy is equal to energy of motion. And it's typically given by E sub K. It's an energy, it's kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is one half mass times the square of the velocity. Or in English units, you have the weight instead of the mass, and so you've got to take the weight and divide it by gravity, multiply by the square of the velocity. And the units will be those of uh, energy, the be in joules or uh, foot pounds. So we should do a couple of examples here. Hmm. Okay. I'll put these equations over on the side so you can check them out. I'll do the first one in metric. So the potential energy, mass times gravity times height, kinetic energy is one half mass times velocity squared. And I got 12 meters, I got a one kilogram egg, it's an ostrich egg, actually it's full of lead weights. There's no way he's going to find us up here. So the mass, let's see, is a half a kilogram of that egg. And the height is 12 meters. My first question is, A, how much energy is stored in that egg by moving it up 12 meters? Well, the potential energy is the mass times gravity times height, which is a half a kilogram times 9.8 meters per second squared times 12 meters. And 
and I get 58.8 kilogram meters per second squared is a newton. A newton times a meter is a joule. 58.8 joules. So I've stored almost 60 joules of energy in that A. Now, if there were no um, if there were no losses, how fast would that have been going by the time it got to the bottom? Well, B, let's see. If no losses, kinetic energy at the bottom is equal to what? Well, if there are no losses, the potential energy is equal to the kinetic energy at the bottom, Kine potential energy at the top. This is conservation of energy. As you move down, if you have no frictional losses, then the total potential plus kinetic energy is always going to be the same. As you go down in height, the potential is going to be dropping, but the kinetic energy is going to be increasing at the same rate. And so by the time you get down to the bottom, you have no potential energy left. You have the same amount of energy you started with, but it will all be kinetic. It's conservation of energy. So the kinetic energy at the bottom is also 58.8 joules. If you take into account friction, it will have less than 58.8 joules at the bottom, but it will have given up the rest of that to the air. Now C, what's the speed at the bottom? What's the velocity at the bottom? Well, let's see, kinetic energy is one-half mass times velocity squared. Now I want to solve for the velocity. I'll multiply both sides by 2 and divide by m. But I'll get rid of all these other pieces, and I have v squared. Velocity squared is twice the kinetic energy divided by the mass. Now, if I take the square root of that velocity squared, I'll get velocity. But I have to do it to both sides. So the velocity at the bottom is the square root. So I took the square root of velocity squared to get velocity of twice the kinetic energy over the mass, which is the square root of 2 times... 58.8, and I'm going to set a joules, I'm going to write that as kilogram meters squared per second squared, because I have to take out some units, cancel out, divided by the mass, which is a half a kilogram. All right, now kilograms cancel. I've got meters squared per second squared, but it's in the square root, so I'll get meters per second, which is the velocity. Woohoo! And that's going to be about, let's see, some big number. No, square root of 240. 15.3. So I'll be moving, it'll be moving at 15.3 meters per second, which is a pretty good clip. Right. Now let's do uh, man, let's do one in English units and uh, and we'll throw in some losses. <laughs>